Good morning. It's uh, today is February 1st, 2018. It's my day 1.265. Uh, just a couple months away from my two year anniversary, which is uh, going to be cool. But um, a couple things happening today. Number one, sorry, uh, my good friend Julie, who uh, says there's no such thing as normal. Um, reached out to me and told me that I needed to take some uh, dietary, dietary digestive enzymes, which I'm sure will help me out and uh, help deal with some of the blockage that I'm having with. Uh, again, I, I blame Spiro because everyone blames Spiro. You know, Spiro is like the kid that gets kicked around. You know, you're having problems with your transition. Oh, you should get off Spiro. You know, it's it's just that first attack. You know, I can't take Spiro, you know, and some people can't because of the potassium and whatever. Anyway, that's, let's not go there. It's information for another time. But uh, Julie did give me a link, and so I'm hoping that will help me out. Um, and it, it's it's kind of an emotional, I mean, it, it feels bad when you're constipated anyway. But, I mean, I'm, I'm on, um, I don't have it with me here, I'm on Miralax, I'm taking pills you know i'm drinking water and, and nothing's coming out and of course then i'm not losing weight so then i'm like i'm not losing weight i'm looking at my surgery etc cetera, etc cetera. so bow wow so that said uh if that wasn't a wonderful uh start to this video uh today is february 1st and uh for all my pagan friends i just want to wish them a very happy imbolc uh, which is the uh, our next holiday of uh, which uh, it concerns a lot with just the early early startings early startings of spring. Usually when you think of spring, you think of Ostara or Easter as it's known in other places, and you think about spring and lambs and Jesus and everything else. You know all that good stuff is Easter. Uh, bunny rabbits, chocolate candies, etc., etc. You think of that <clears throat> as spring, whereas Imbolc is the start of spring. You know, those baby lambs have got to come from somewhere, and wouldn't you happen to know it? Imbolc is a Gaelic term uh, for in the belly. It deals with pregnancy, and that's in the belly, Imbolc. Uh, and so, uh, pardon me if I butchered the pronunciation of that. Uh, or got any of that right, wrong, historical information, but that's that's kind of where it comes from. Um, and uh, you get into some other things if you dig into Ireland. Uh, St. Bridget was a Catholic uh, saint that was actually a pagan uh, goddess that got sucked into Catholicism because they couldn't, they realized if we want to take over this country religiously, we're going to have to incorporate the goddess Bridget. So suddenly out of nowhere came saint brigid and you get into candle mass and everything else and that's also another name for it candle mass okay uh but that's a whole other discussion for a whole other probably a whole other channel has absolutely nothing to do with transition with the exception of my friends uh i would say also to this time of year and again we're gonna go with in bulk for the moment for the vehicle uh as far as dealing with those inner seeds um, a seed is a good thing, a seed in your womb, and, and especially for trans women, we don't have a womb, but inside I think we do somewhere if we can get a little metaphysical, and I think in that is a seed uh, of what our future is going to be, our feminine future, our femininity, we are providing that seed, and, and, and much like anything else, you can put anything in there that, you know, to help you, where, where it's a way of looking at where you're going to be in the next three or four months when spring actually you know when spring does get here it's a way of feeding of deciding okay what is it inside me that i want to change what is it do i want to grow do i have any bad habits that i want to get rid of and in the way of kind of a purification you are looking at yourself and saying okay i have a lot of uh, old stuff in here that you know my old and again from a transgender point of view maybe some male stuff in here some fear some worry and part of in bulk is is getting rid of that purging yourself and then 
it's kind of pink. <laughs> uh, some new things that maybe you want to do or new things you want to try. And, and again, for trans women, your growing feminine personality, your growing feminine presentation, things that maybe you have locked inside of you that you want to see uh, grow on out. And so again, in book is a good time uh, for that. Um, in the United States, pretty soon we have Groundhog's Day, which I think technically is tomorrow, February 2nd, uh, which also comes from in bulk, um, particularly the Kaliak. And, and if she sees her shadow, you know, then there's six more weeks of winter. That was another thing that was kind of stolen and became Groundhog's Day. Um, but again, that idea of, you know, spring is coming. Spring is coming. Get ready. Get ready. Look at yourself, figure out what you want to accomplish, what you want to do. Set yourself a small goal and you're feeding that energy into that so that, you know, it's something to come into for the weeks ahead. You know, if you're just starting out on hormones and, and by all means, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm maybe I'm offering suggestions, but, you know, your mileage may vary. Uh, if you're just starting out on hormones, you know, get out your calendar and look at where you'll be. Uh, come a star or come come springtime uh, come Easter time you know what what changes are you making and what things maybe can you purge some negative behaviors from your past whether for me I'll, I'll take you out of it and that way you know it's me uh, my fear of what would happen in my transition uh, perhaps the shame that I felt uh, with uh, letting my true self come forward and uh, some of the guilt even and this goes way back. Um, oof, how vulnerable do I want to get? Um, okay, a lot of my first steps, okay, into this world was when I was in college. And um, I would go down to, I didn't have a car, I didn't have a way to get off campus, so I would go down to, oh, God, I admit this now. Uh, I would go to the laundry room, which was co-ed, and I would borrow, or steal, borrow is probably the better word, um, girls' clothes. I would go down uh, to the laundry room like at 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I would take the clothes, I would wear them and feel wonderful and feel guilty and rewash them and dry them. You know, So by 6 a.m., uh, the clothes were like, had been washed and, and whatnot, and, and I, I imagine some girl probably, like, got her clothes and were like, I didn't put fabric softener in it or whatever, you know, so I have guilt over that. I am ashamed of that behavior, okay, and it would be a way, it would be a good way of me to say I'm sorry and and own up to it and put it in the thing that I'm going to get rid of and say, I'm sorry, you know, if that was a huge thing, or if I had some sort of shame or guilt with my family, also would be a way of, of recognizing it, addressing it, owning it, and purging it to make way for the new, to make way for the woman that I am going to become, and like other people I can think of, Stephanie, Amelia, Amber, uh, Sabrina, I mean, we're all in this process of growing even julie who is there's no normal and uh julia as a as a mentor from a she's an upperclassman she's a previous graduating class and i truly am blessed with her friendship uh and everything so um where were we going with that so in bulk is a kind of a big deal and you don't necessarily have to be a pagan to celebrate it if you're interested be interested okay uh, so that's that. Um, the other thing, which I can't do now because I have a cat in my lap, and that's the rule in our house, is if you have a cat in your lap, you don't have to get up. My daughter uses it all the time. You know, she'd say, and I can't do her voice, I won't try. Uh, you know, I'll say, you know, Katie, did you take the trash out? Or Katie, uh, remember today's your dishwashing day. <laughs> She'll say, well, I would like to get up and do my chores, but... Our Nene is in my lap, and I can't get up right now, and I'll be like, okay, I understand, I understand. So I have a cat in my lap, but what I was going to do was stand up so you could see, I don't know if you could see, I'm wearing a dress today, yay, and that was my fear, uh, to be honest, um, 
I, uh, I had a fear of dresses because I've always loved dresses and I never looked good in a dress and I won't say that I still do. Uh, perhaps I am before I was a lumpy potato. Okay. I was a lumpy potato. My body was potato shaped and had bulges and everything where they, you know, had a, lots of eyes. Uh, and I have become an apple. Well, I've become a pear shaped potato. You know, now I have this like kind of pear shape, but still the lumpy lumpiness. And so I actually uh, wear, uh, fit into this dress and it kind of has an empire waist. And so it makes it me look like I have hips and I don't really have, well, I don't have hips from bone. <laughs> I have fat distribution now. And so you would think hopefully 20 months on hormones, you know, and again, your mileage may vary. My mileage may vary, but I'm actually wearing a dress today and I just, oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And uh, they say beauty is in the eye of a beholder. And if you are a beholder, you probably have six eyes. So you must look really good to yourself. It's a D and D joke. I'm sorry. Um, but that's kind of my thing. And, um, I just realized it just now. I've, I've, I've been putting it off because of my shame. Okay, that would be a good example. Okay, so I'm going to start to wear more dresses. Okay, and and express myself in this way, my presentation, if you will. So that's cool. All right, fair enough. Go team. Um, the second topic is somewhat related to... Um, I guess where I'm at in my transition, and I've said this before as recently as two days ago, I really feel like I need to get over uh, when someone says Karen. I mean, Karen is, is a new development, okay, in the last month, because I've always gone by Robin um, since the 90s. But I really want to share good news that you know, um, this morning, I, I'm reading it now. Um, this morning, I got an add a girl from my boss's boss's boss, okay, where I work. Three levels up for some stuff, some research I had done and uh, whatnot. And it was just to say, um, you know, he said, Karen, thank you so much. And I can't say anything else because I don't want to get in trouble. Um, but anyway. Use my name, Karen. And my coworkers who have been with me for, I've been at the company for 19 years, been working with them for, I think the longest has been 11 years and then seven. So they have known me for a long time. And again, to get Karen and she and her, and this is what we did, and she did this, and Karen, and again, it just, oh, it just feels so good. So, um, yeah, and uh, I have a thing that I put on the wall yesterday when I went to my daughter's school. They gave us name badges, and mine says uh, visitor, and then it says Karen Parks and the date. And I put that on my wall because that's the first thing in print that I have. And when you see something in print, when you get a letter uh, or something... Um, you know, when you get a, a piece of mail or something and it has your, your name on it that you love, it's just so affirming. So if anything, get, get you a piece of paper today and write your name. Okay, do yourself a favor. Start to write your name. Use your name. You know, Karen, Jessica, Amelia, I'm sure you do already. Um, use your name, you know, and so that's that. So cool name this. Uh, part three, topic three. Uh, again, today being the first time that I've worn a dress. Uh, outside of, you know, hey, I'm going to buy myself a dress and it came in the mail. I'm going to wear it. Oh, I like it. Put it on the shelf. Um, my daughter said to me today, she said, uh, she said, that looks really good on you. And of course, you know, I was like, happy meter. Do -do 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 -do. And she, I said, well, thank you. I said, it's the first time I've worn a dress. And she says, oh, well, it, it, I approve. It looks really good on you. And I'm like, well, good, if you approve it. <laughs> and she went about her business, already on to the next thing. And I I just stood there for a moment. I was like, thank you all. Thank you. 
thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, you know, just again, how long did I put this off thinking I had so much hate and fear and, I mean, not hate in me, but a hate of myself, but so much fear, shame, and guilt from other people telling me, you know, you can't do this because you're a parent. You can't do this. You're a father. You can't do this. You know, you're not, don't you love your child, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, these people like put their hooks in you and, 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 and shred you down and, and to just realize that is not reality. To realize again that I have a daughter that loves me for me, and um, you know, so I have her permission. So that's that's kind of funny. Um, and then the last thing, um, which I'm kind of hesitant to put to box car to be the caboose for this video because it's not really trans related. So if you're only interested in transgender stuff, this is probably a good point to, you know, for me to say good luck and peace out and I'll see you next time. But if you're interested, um, when I left Catholicism, this is religion. We're going to talk about spirituality, my spirituality. When I left Catholicism, okay, um, I really am a year and a day person. And I think that's kind of a mythical, you know, a year and a day is a period of time, uh, you know, before you make a decision or if you're going to do something important, a year and a day. And, and definitely, boy, that's, if you're thinking about getting married, I would definitely do that for a year and a day, okay? If you can make it a year and a day, you know, usually when you decide to get married, for those of you who are thinking about getting married or you want to get married, when you say to someone else and they agree to get married, the momentum from that will carry you all the way. I mean, you it's like you thought getting ready for Christmas was a one-way trip. You know, planning a wedding and having a wedding can be a lot of momentum. Okay. And I would say if you meet someone and you're, you, you know, date them forever, but once you decide you're going to get married – Wait a year and a day, okay? That's my suggestion. And again, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. And, and you say, well, we love each other. Okay, a year and a day. Just give it a year and a day. And the reason for that is you go through a whole turning of the wheel as, of the year. You get to go through a whole year. And I think it 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 is a test somewhat of your strength and determination. And I think if you're willing to wait a year and a day... Um, it says a lot about your commitment to each other. Now, again, you can say, you're crazy, Karen. Okay, I'm going to do what I want to do. And, and that's perfect that you do what you want to do. I wish I would have waited a year and a day. Let me put it that way. But so a year and a day is kind of important to me. And when I, when I decided I was leaving Catholicism, leaving Christianity behind me, um, I gave it a year and a day. You know, I made sure I, uh, I read the Bible one more time all the way through. Uh, I continued to go to mass and question and confession and all of those things. I love daily mass. I really did. I know some people kind of poo-poo it, but I love the daily. Uh, it was my time to meditate, reflect, and whatever. And I loved it. I loved it, daily mass. Now, that said, I despise Sunday mass, <laughs> okay, because Sunday mass – uh, was like what I consider the amateurs, and that's that's a highly judgmental statement against other Catholics, and I do apologize. Um, but you know, it's like, uh, and I'll keep it in Catholics, but you probably could say Christianity the same way. Any religion, if you go to one service a year, that's great. But you know, I didn't like the. It seems so very disconnected to me. You know, and again, if I when I did daily mass, we were lucky to have ten parishioners, okay, to go to daily mass, and it's so much of a one-on-one -on -one relationship. And then to go to a Sunday mass and have two hundred people and kids screaming, and you know, people that really didn't want to be there, but they were there from guilt and whatever. It was just like you know, so I skipped Sunday mass, but I went every other day, and I would go to Saturday mass if I if I if I felt like it. So please don't. Judge me. I'm judge me as I am judging other people by all means. 
and that's a bad habit I have. But it, it, the important thing was a year and a day, a year and a day. I told myself I have to read the Bible one more time, all the way through, front to back, cover to cover, uh, and study it and make a decision. And so that's kind of what I did. And after doing that, my year was up, and I decided, no, this is not for me. And to a certain degree, Christianity is not for me. But um, And so in that light, as I am being pulled, I'm feeling a pull back into Wicca, okay, which I did uh, 20 years ago-ish um, from the male space. And I, I had a hard time kind of identifying with Wicca somewhat, but there were parts of it that I really, really liked. And I'm feeling myself being pulled back into Wicca. And I guess that's from the feminine energy, from the feminine space. I'm like in love with it. Um, but again, year and a day. <laughs> I have to do, I have to wait a year and a day. And if after a year and a day, then, then yes, uh, I will say, yes, I'm Wiccan. Uh, I'm a, I'm a witch. I'm a solo practice. I'm a sol solitary witch. I'm a solitary practitioner. But for the moment, I'm just an interested person. I, I am interested in it. You could say, I wouldn't even say I'm an initiate into it. I'm just a curious party, okay, doing a lot of research and a lot of soul searching. And I guess the reason why I mention it is because I have made some minor changes in the household. My daughter is here. And I've talked to my daughter on several occasions, on a couple of occasions, excuse me. You know, I set up a small, uh, what I would call a display, not necessarily an altar, not a shrine. So a shrine probably would be the best thing. Uh, a small shrine with a candle uh, representing the divine all, everything, what non-pagans I think would call God. Uh, the universe, and then two smaller candles, one for the female energy, one for the masculine energy, one for the goddess, one for the god, which for me is Athena and Odin, okay? And so that has been something that I have changed a little bit, as well as a place to burn incense and a place to go and meditate and think about things and feel out. You know, feeling, I'm feeling out, you know. And in addition to that, I have rearranged my room a little bit. Um, I have a bookcase um, for my own personal library. I have a library, we have a library downstairs with all of our like novels and whatnot. And we keep our comic books and manga and everything. My daughter and I both. And it's a good place to go if you want to be alone. Go downstairs and you get the whole basement to yourself and you can read, whatever. But I've definitely built my own personal library, um, and that has got two books on it right now related to witchcraft. And then today I have some more coming. Um, and again, one of them one of them is kind of an exploratory, you know, a way of asking, "Is this for me?" And you know, things to meditate on and evaluate. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because, again, my daughter yesterday. You know, ask me a question about, you know, are you doing this for your D&D game? Because I have a witch in my D&D game, um, which is a, a kind of a major character that I can't say anything else because some of the people that play D&D watch my videos. Uh, but there's definitely some stuff going on with a coven and, and whatnot. Um, and a book of spells, spell book. But... You know, so my daughter knows I've been researching that for that. And she kind of asked me again. She said, now, is this for your game? And I said to her, I said, no, sweetie. I said, um, you know, I am being drawn in this direction and I need to see where it leads. I need to find out where it's at. I'm doing a lot of digging to to track down my relationship and whatnot. And she said, well, I don't understand. It's all fake. And I said to her, I said, well, I said, um, you can believe that i said you know i said i've never pushed my religion on you whatsoever you know i was raised catholic and she said yeah and i said and i you know that you were baptized catholic and she said yeah and i said i i firmly believe that 
you are of the age that you can begin to ask your own questions. Well, what is, who is God? What is God? Is there a God? What is my relationship to God? And, you know, if she, I would encourage her if she was interested to uh, try out the different flavors of Christianity, Baptist, Baptist, Pentecostal, Catholicism, um, as much as I would, uh, you know, to be, you know, Judaism, uh, and some of the more philosophy-based ones like, you know, Buddhism or Shinto or, you know, I, I'm not funneling my daughter in any direction whatsoever, with the slight exception of, of good <laughs> and morality, you know, the idea of uh, and, and doing good because you want to do be good. You know, that I, I definitely am a, am a good person and that, that kind of morality uh, that I am a, a pusher of but not of a particular flavor. And uh, she's really having a hard time with it. And I just said to her, I said, well, you know, for every, oh, every person, it's their own exploration of how they relate to the universe and how they see maybe powers greater than themselves. And so again, I'm very generic with her, but I feel myself being pulled uh, closer and closer into this other and it's definitely more in tune with who I am today than who I was 20 years ago and so that has been somewhat of a concern it's kind of related to my transition only in that um, I think as a as a woman um, previously I had feelings that were in a bottle or that were in the shame cube um, you know, the guilt cube here, the shame cube, and I, I realize I put that one over there, but I have more note cards um, from my German. Uh, you know, it was like in a bottle, and of course I had a lot of programming from the time from my brainwashing before. You know, witches are bad. You know, God is the only way. Christ is the only way. I mean, I, I, I had a lot of inner turmoil to kind of get over. And to examine but is probably the better thing is to pull it apart and see what what is going on here and, and follow the threads. And, and that would be something my stepfather always had said to me, uh, you know, when it comes to God and your rela your relationship with the divine, uh, you know, he believes and I would say I believe, too, that anything that strengthens your understanding and your relationship with the divine, as you see it, is actually a pretty good thing. You know, and to others it might be, oh well, you you're going down the wrong path, or you're being tempted by Satan. You know, well, I don't believe in Satan, so no. Uh, but uh, good answer, good answer. Um, you know, again, uh, it, it's a part of my transition somewhat, but not 100%. Okay, and again, as a woman, I definitely, um, you know, again, the, the old. My old programming from, from my old days, you know, Catholicism, and I'll even say Christianity as it was, and that's not to say it as it is, as it was, uh, was so against women and being a woman and whatever. And, and it's, it's changing. I mean, it has to change. Religion has to change with society. Uh, and I'm so glad to see female priests and from a feminine energy being included in a lot of things. I know a lot of people in our area are part of Highland Baptist Church very accepting and open community um, and that's wonderful so uh, but I did kind of want to include it because it is a change in me but it's not necessarily related to being transgender with the exception of like the example I gave of M bulk and you could take that totally out of paganism or Wicca okay and just say look outside your window and say you know um, there's little buds on the trees or my tulips are coming up you know there's these little shoots look at your grass my grass is starting to be a little green I can see some growth and you can say hmm, hey that's like me my inner growth where I'm going I mean you don't have to include religion into it whatsoever you know so uh, I'm almost at 30 minutes so I guess I better sign off but I do appreciate if you did watch all the way to the end and uh, I still have this cat in my lap, but now I need to go walk on the treadmill. And can I use that as an excuse? Unfortunately, no, because I want to have surgery. And uh, speaking of surgery, today being a Thursday, 
we get to knock off a week off the uh, the mental calendar. So now it's seven weeks and six days. <laughs> but seven. Oh, oh, I'm excited. Seven weeks. Seven weeks. Seven weeks to go now instead of eight. And uh, yeah, seven weeks from now, I'll be knocked out of my ass and I will be having a construction crew take apart and put together and make balloon animals out of my uh, nip the testes the and uh, make little balloon animals. I don't know what they're going to do. And I really don't care. I have watched the video and you know what? Uh, you don't have to be a mechanic to have a cool car, right? You get a problem with your car, you take it to the mechanic. This is having a problem. The mechanic does it, returns the car back to you, performs beautifully, okay? I don't have to know, okay? That's my take on it. I know what the surgery entails, but knock my ass out, please, okay? All right, so on that note, uh, very sincere um Thank yous and uh, definitely um, a lot. Of, just thank you for a lot of the support. I know I've been a crazy bitch. Um, my friend Jamie and, and my friend Michelle and Stephanie and, and people that I've met, Amber, Amelia, and uh, a lot of other names. Um, I just appreciate your friendship. And my good friend Anna, uh, you know, and, and Heather, and, and I could go on and on and on and on and on. The people that have remained and stood by me on this crazy ass ride okay i thank you i thank you and i hope i hope i can return return the favor of friendship okay um and we'll go from here okay and much like in bulk uh again out with the old in with the new give it fuel and fire in your belly and see what grows See what grows. Okay? Do yourself a favor. See, see what grows. We're changing. And this is one way of visualizing that. So, All right, my friends. On that note, I love you all and good luck in your journey.